Good morning, all. Um, this is Cindy Gallagher, Director of Government Relations here at SANES. I want to take this opportunity to update you on approximately three items that have occurred during February. Uh, although this was a very short month, it was certainly filled with lots of content and lots of discussion here in Albany. So um, the first one is uh, something that's uh, happened on February 6th, and that was the joint meeting of the Assembly and Senate on the executive budget. Basically, that's a day where all of the, well, anybody who wants to submit testimony, um, but mostly state associations of education, um, provide their remarks of either opposition or support for items that are in the executive budget. The day began with the commissioner um, having four hours of testimony, which is just um, an unheard of amount of time, and she, she was masterful. Um, spoke about why, they are, why the department is uh, uh, supporting uh, increased state aid over the uh, executive budget. The remaining day certainly was uh, uh, left for all of the state associations and that went till about 1030. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Saney's uh, testimony at this hearing. We too, along with our uh, colleagues at the Education Conference Board, um, called for an increase over the governor's budget. On uh, a slide that you'll see um, in just a second, the governor proposed a $956 million increase to state aid, 338 of which was foundation aid, and even of that was $50 million for um, community schools. The ECB and State Education Department all came in with about a $2.2 billion increase. So you can automatically see the discrepancy between the executive budget and many of the state associations from $958 million increase to a $2.2 billion increase. So much of the testimony uh, spoke and addressed to the uh, just inappropriate and insufficient nature of the proposed budget. There were two other items within the executive budget that I wanna make you um, uh, aware of. One was uh, a change to the expense-based aid. The governor has called for a $400 million increase to expense-based aids. The problem with that is in the next year, what he is <clears throat> uh, proposing is to collapse those categories, which are transportation and policies aid in large part, into one kind of grant amount. Uh, that would really then call for a baseline amount to districts and then add to that an inflation factor for the outgoing years. That really does restrict many of our districts and BOCES in terms of actually uh, getting reimbursed for their, ex um, for their actual expenses in those categories. Lastly, as part of that uh, testimony, many of us addressed the fact of the governor's proposed uh, changes to the building level reporting. You may recall for 70 districts last year, they were required to do a projection of their, all of their expenses by local, state, and federal funding sources. The amount of districts will increase to 300 for this next school year, and then the next school year, all 700 and some districts will be required to project their allocation by every funding source. Now that's in addition to also the ESSA requirement, which would require all of our districts to report by federal, state, and local funds um, their actual expenditures. The governor took that concept many steps forward in this proposal. And basically what he says is now we are going to identify those buildings where there is an equity gap, and then the school district will be required to distribute those funds in a formula to be decided in this statute that we are opposing um, the redistribution of funds. Clearly, Saney's and our other colleagues uh, feel that this is really an impingement on district um, decision making. Uh, the decision on how to distribute funds is a very local matter, where many of the decisions on how to do that is based on uh, teacher longevity, the kind of programs that are offered at a school, or, um, it, or the kind of focus that that school wants to have. So those three items uh, were particularly uh, interesting during our, uh, the testimony of many of the state education associations. Certainly, Saney's joins in uh, opposing the changes to the building reporting, uh, expense paid formula collapsing, and certainly we call for an additional um, increase to foundation aid. The second event was the Board of Regents meeting on February 11th and 12th. I just want to talk very quickly about two um, items on that agenda. 
And basically, this was a two-day meeting that was collapsed into one due to the inclement weather. Um, the first discussion was on uh, ESSA designations as TSI and CSI. We talked a little, about, a little bit about that during our last video. There continues to be confusion <coughs> on, excuse me, on the part of the Board of Regents, as well as in the field, um, regarding the number of students participating in state assessments and how that impacts the designations. Um, you will uh, need to remember on this topic, and when we discussed it uh, last video, that the number of students participating in the state assessments impacts the designations in that the number is used as the denominator for a good number of the formulas. So the commissioner, and when I speak to uh, many of my former colleagues at State Ed, will continue to say that there is no one school that has been designated as a CSI or a CSI based solely on their opt-out uh, numbers. The critical part here, of course, to remember is that those numbers, though, are using the denominator, and if many of your students are performing at level one or level two, there is good reason to think that that combination would lead a school building to be designated as TSI or CSI. The second item that was discussed at this meeting was the graduation rates, and you will um, see on your um, uh, screen uh, one of the items that was discussed. So clearly the graduation rates have remained fairly stable at about 80% statewide. What was interesting in, on this slide is you'll see the categories of the new pathways to a diploma. So the questions that the regents raised on this particular topic is, are the pathways in any way affecting the graduation rates? Meaning, are some pathways used more than others? If so, how successful are they to leading to a diploma? And then actually going a bit further and talking about whether some districts who have um, the ability to offer many of these pathways, if that is not perhaps um, leading to an unintended consequence of being an equity issue. So the beginning of many, many interesting conversations, again, diving deeper into what is really at the heart of the graduation rates, and um, looking further into the data about um, our optional pathways to a diploma. The last topic that continues towards the last part of February is the um, legislature and the introduction of a couple of bills that I think you'll find interesting. There are several bills before the legislature right now um, that are getting a lot of attention that would allow districts to um, decline being a polling place for elections. There are a couple of things I think that are certainly precipitating this, certainly school safety, in addition to that, though, for, um, collapsing the primary days, uh, school board votes, budget votes, primaries, the collapsing of the primaries into one, certainly extends the voting days throughout the school year to a much greater number. And I know as principals, we have heard from our members that this is of great concern on those days where you have put in many protections to keep your school safe. And then on election days, uh, that kind of goes out the window uh, when the community comes into vote. The last uh, piece of legislation, and there are several bills on this, it goes to the heart of school bus safety. In the governor's executive budget, there is a piece that would say that school districts could work with vendors on the school, on the arms that have cameras that would uh, uh, actually click and video a car passing by that the school district would be allowed to collect, the, not collect, but get those fines uh, from law enforcement agencies who in fact uh, find that there has been a, uh, an infraction of the law. Another one would allow cameras, so I expect that we will see some action on school safety as well. Um, so it's been a busy month here. Please feel free to give us a call on any of these issues or others that you may have concerns, questions, or interest, and thank you, and we'll hopefully um, be talking with you all soon.